this feels like they started writing a movie for like a third Silent Hill movie and then halfway through realised they just didn't have the rights for it. If you're new here, I like to look through those movies which maybe get a little bit less talked about, a little less coverage, and try and find some hidden gems in amongst them. One for myself and two, maybe to add something on your watch list. So if you're new, hit subscribe and there's plenty more coming out. But on with the review. Off Season. Now Off Season is probably one of the most kind of shallow movies I've seen in a long time. The premise of this is really straightforward. We're following Marie and George in this. Now Marie's mum was buried on an island and her grave has now been vandalised. So she gets a letter to go to this island and really just see the damage and help try and repair it. It opens up on a monologue of her mum and it is a long-winded monologue. It does make sense tying into like the end of the movie, but for the opening, it is a very slow opening. There's some beautiful long cinematic shots kind of on the setup and on the journey to this island, but once they get there, not much really happens. You've got the creepy characters, everybody in this town on this island. It's just that cliche creepy way where they've got blank stares, they seem kind of part of a cult where nobody will talk to the newcomers, but they all know something, and you can see they all know something by the way that they're looking at her, and there's a couple of characters that do engage and do talk to her, and they get pulled away, they get shunned off. So Marie is just stumbling across creepy thing after creepy thing in this town. She separates from like her ex-partner George that she's went with, and they on their own ways, she sees a lot of creepiness. He's just out on the beach having a look, and they're hunting down one of the first people they found on this village, here to get them access to the grave site, and lower the bridge to get them back out. That is just one of the Silent Hill references that this movie has so many of. A lot of the visuals and a lot of the shots in here really pay homage to Silent Hill, like to a scary degree. There's the bridge that's left upright that can't leave again, and the fucking fog in this. Did somebody overpay for fog, like put an extra zero on the fog machine fluid? Because every shot in this just seems to be covered in fog, like every resident was part of Vape Nation, and every time the camera's off them, they're just going to town on that nicotine. It's very sombre, this movie and it does build some good ambience but this is where the Silent Hill kind of isms fall off because that's rooted in the main character's psychology and everything that happens within Silent Hill has a connection. Here it's just creepy for the sake of creepy without any kind of deeper message to it. The movie is well split into chapters which I'm seeing a lot of recently and I'm not a fan of it in this movie here particularly because it spoils each of the chapters with its title. You know what's going to be coming up next, you know it gives you a vague title but that's enough to start putting the pieces together and it just gets distracting because all you can think about the whole time is how that title relates to the next 10 minutes or so of the movie. A lot of the acting in here though is very stiff, rigid. Even the characters stand just a little bit far away from each other. That's not how you have a conversation. Of course there's fucking mannequins in here as well. I fucking hate mannequins. And nobody seems to really have chemistry with anyone else in the movie. Even the main two that we're following here that travel together. They don't work well together. You don't believe them as either friends or even ex-partners. It's just all a little stiff. Now with the creepiness and we start to understand what's happened, I will just throw out a very slight spoiler here because you kind of get the gist of it. It's demons. The people within this town made a deal with a demon, the demon's coming back. You don't get much more than that. It's a little bit of a gripe here, the way that movies will just use demons with no explanation. Basically thinking that just the fact that they've used a demon is all the information you need because you can believe that they can do anything. I personally love a demon that's got some rules about it and you understand a little bit of its backstory. Even if you cast your mind back and think back to your best demon movies, they had rules, they had a structure to them, and you understood where they were coming from, but not in movies like this. Marie gets separated from George a couple of times, but I swear one of the encounters here, the main one where they split, she just fucking dips. Like, they get in an accident, and she just fucking leaves him. It doesn't even look as though she's got a moment of hesitation to either see if he's there, okay, or where he's gone. She just fucks off. Of course, one of the people in the village here is the one that opens up to her and talks to her a little bit more. Yes, he's vague and doesn't just give her answers the way that anybody would rightfully expect. Couldn't help but think he reminded me of because he looks like and talks like Jesus from The Walking Dead games, not that Jesus. And because the movie doesn't ever set anything too grand up and it doesn't ask too many kind of big open-ended questions, there's not a lot to wrap up here so it does wrap things up quite well, quite neatly, but only because it never set up enough to wrap up, if that makes sense. I'm really not sure what happened during the production or even during the writing of this movie. As I said, I fully believe they began writing a Silent Hill movie, got into the setup for it in the scenario, and then realised they did not have the ability to continue with this, and then so had to just shoehorn in demons, shoehorn a cult, and that's kind of what's happened here, because it just doesn't work. Unfortunately, it is a very boring time having to watch this movie, 
movie. It doesn't look too appealing either. Some of the shots are quite nice when it's setting up the scenes and showing off this kind of town and the island itself. But really other than that, there's far too much fog and it is very dark for most of this movie to really take in what you're looking at. Couple of nice little things. There's a chase in the movie, which they play with quite well. And it was enjoyable to see what they've done different to other kind of demon chases or, you know, when someone is just not meant to escape. And secondly, and they've been able to use that bridge. She watches a video explaining how to use the bridge, which is better than a main character just slapping at buttons and eventually it works. So I did like that little bit there. But really, this main character, she's not that likeable. She has no remorse for her friend and ex-partner that she's there with. As I said, she dips on him earlier, and then when they encounter each other later in the movie, she doesn't seem to carry any of this burden on her shoulders. <laughs> It's just, I fully get she wants to escape, but show a little bit of compassion here and escape with the person you came with. Where would I be given this movie? I would be saying if you've got the time, go and do anything else. It is the bottom of the barrel rating I can give it, and I had to sit through this to let you know that. But look, that's just some of my thoughts here on Off Season. Have you seen it? If you have, do we agree or disagree? Let me know down below. But whilst you're there, if you haven't already, do subscribe for plenty more coming out. But thank you so much for watching.